Hello everybody, my name's Ben Robbins. I'm from the Lost World of Movie Props and I'm here today with Jenna Lee Green. How are you doing? Hi, I'm very well, thank you. You? Oh, I'm brilliant, thank you. Yes, thank you so much for talking to me today. I'm, I'm so excited to talk to you. I'm a big fan of yours from the 90s and yeah, it should be yeah. really good fun. <laughs> yeah, great. Awesome, so have you have me just to ask you the first question and get going? Yeah, just yeah. jump right in. <laughs> so, um, um, when you were growing up, were you always wanting to be an actress and a, a singer and a performer, or was this something that came later on into into your life? Um, you know, definitely, I definitely um, leaned towards it when I was young, but not necessarily as young as a lot of other, you know, child or teen performers. Um, I was never, you know, a child in the sound of music or Annie. I wasn't that little. I was still pretty shy, to be honest, at that age. Yeah. I have a twin sister. She was much more outgoing than I was. But um, we both kind of fell into it. We come from a very artistic family, not necessarily professionally, but just very, my, my parents were very into music and arts and my grandparents. So it, we were always around it. And I think for me, I started discovering that, that it was this fantasy world. And, you know, at the time I was sometimes struggling with a little bit of, of shyness and I could just jump into a different character. And all of a sudden I wasn't shy anymore because I was, I was somebody else. Um, it wasn't debilitating in any way. It was, I was just a little bit quieter. And um, it probably was a bit more around age, I'd say 11 or 12, that I really started thinking, I love this, I love this. I don't think I even realized I could do it professionally yet. Yeah. But very quickly being raised, you know, right outside of Los Angeles, there's a lot of resources and a lot of, a, a lot of stuff kind of at your fingertips if you want to start pursuing it professionally. So I was introduced to people and did every community theater play, every school play, everything I could do. Um, discovered when I was probably 12 that I could sing. So that was late too. My, my, my mother says that she had no idea. And someone asked her and said, you know, do you know that Jenny can, she can really sing? And my mom said, ah, she sings around the house all the time. I don't know. <laughs> so it was just kind of a little bit of a late discovery. And then I just jumped in and never looked back. Awesome. So um, what, what sort of songs did you first start singing when you were younger? What, what music were you singing along to? Oh, gosh. Um, every show tune. I think when I was really young, it was um, the, the, the two big like Broadway musicals that I can think of that were my favorite was um, Les Miserables, which to this day is still my favorite show of all time. And, yeah. um, and Miss Saigon, those two shows, I just, I wanted, I could probably still to this day sing almost every word to both scores. Awesome. Wow. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so which, what was your first role then when you were quite younger, when you first started getting into plays and that? Um, oh my gosh. Through, uh, you know, I don't remember exactly what, what the first, the first thing was there was, um, you know, it, I went to a church when I was a little girl that, um, uh, you know, once a year they do kind of like a, a, some sort of a musical performance. And it was usually like slightly scripted with music in it as well. And I know I did a couple of those. I would never in a million years be able to remember the names. Yeah. Um, and then um, in some like middle school, I know I did a production of Cinderella, which was not musical. And I think I was the queen. I really wanted to be Cinderella. And I <laughs> they cast me as the queen. Um, but I think one of the first big roles that I played, like it, that I can remember really diving into was I did a production of the diary of Anne Frank and played Anne. And that was, that was a huge lesson for me in, mm. in just um, a work ethic and how to study and how to learn and how yeah. to really just immerse yourself into something. Cause it was massive. That play is so long. She never leaves the stage. She never stops talking. So I think that that might've been the first big show that I did. Yeah. 
So did, did you find it quite easy to, to learn all this and fall into it? Or was it a real challenge for you? Were you quite natural at it? It's, it's interesting to me when we're really young, I feel like we have so much less fear than we have as we get older now. And, you know, for the last probably, I don't know, 10, 15 years, I actually struggle with stage fright. I get nervous very easily. Oh, have really? To, yeah. I'm for auditions for job, even when I've booked the job, like it takes me a, quite a while and a lot of, you know, exercises and, and outside things to try and calm down and focus and stop the nerves from going. But when you're young, um, it's like you're fearless. So I think that the, the memorization of things is always a little bit hard because it's, you know, you either have that gene and you can just easily absorb or you have to really work at it. I think some things come very naturally and easy to me, but um, like music sometimes comes easier because you usually can listen to it. Yeah. And especially if you're doing something that has been done before, there's a recording somewhere that you can just listen to over and over and over. Um, but dialogue, you know, you have to really, and I've gone through so many different phases of different ways to memorize mm. throughout the years. I used to do things where I would record it all and then I would listen to it back. Now I'm in this phase where I write every, I have notebooks and notebooks and notebooks full of just writing. And if somebody picked up one of them and, and flipped through it for some random reason, they would think I was crazy. <laughs> it's all just different things that I have either auditioned for or actually worked on and I write it out like sentences. And there's something yeah. about the act of doing that, seeing it, writing it, getting like it, that helps me. Hmm. But it's always- so it <laughs> Brilliant. So that, that sort of helps with the, the memory focus and being able to memorize your lines and your, your spots. Yeah, you really have to get it pretty solid. And, and a lot of times you're on your own. So it's hard. You don't have someone else to kind of sometimes you can drag another person into, you know, reading lines back and forth with you, but that's boring for anyone else. So I try <laughs> not to do it unless I have to. Awesome. So coming up through school and that. So going into like high school and that, were you a lot, were you did a lot of acting? Were you doing drama and stuff in high school into college? Absolutely. Well, I didn't go to college. I actually was doing Sabrina when I should have been um, in college. So yeah. I didn't do that. But at the same time, I probably would have if I, you know, looking back at 16, 17 year old me, I'm sure that that's what I what I would have wanted to study if I went to college was, you know, performing arts and I was actually doing it. So I feel like I kind of got a similar um education it was more the you know the the normal things like like English and languages and other things that I I possibly could have gotten a bit more education in but yeah. um uh yeah I think from the time I was probably 13 I was honestly just doing everything that came my way and searching things out as well I like I said I, because of where I grew up I did have a lot of access to, I grew up probably around about 45 minutes from Los Angeles proper and Hollywood. So where, where things, the, the main place where things at the time, um, things filmed, I wasn't that far. And so yeah. being a part of the business professionally was not out of the question when I was young. Oh, wow, that's awesome. So um, obviously you mentioned Sabrina then. So was Sabrina one of your first big TV roles that you got? Sure. Um, I had done a, a few things prior to that. I, I, I know that I had done some, uh, I did a few commercials. I did a couple tele, you know, uh, made for television movies. They, they nice. used to be, that used to be a much bigger thing um, in the the 90s of you know NBC that the major uh, television stations out here would do like a two-hour movie of the week and so I did a couple of those um but really I had not done very much stuff before getting Sabrina I was very lucky yeah. so I've uh, what kind very of hard since then but at that point I was very lucky yeah <laughs> so uh, what kind of adverts had you done then Oh my gosh, I did um, a clothing 
a, a, a commercial for a, a clothing company that I don't even know if it exists anymore. It was a, a, a brand of, of jeans, uh, trousers, I think you guys say, um, uh -huh. for Bugle Boy was the brand. I did a commercial for the candy bar, the uh, Butterfinger. Oh, I know Butterfinger, yeah. <laughs> Butterfinger. They used to have those little, they called them Butterfinger BBs. I don't even know if they still exist, but they were little balls of Butterfinger. And I did a commercial for that, which somehow surfaced recently on YouTube or something like that. And it was hysterical to see oh, that. Really? Commercial. Yeah. Uh, somebody sent it to me uh, and I honestly hadn't seen it in, you know, 20 years. But um I remember doing those two. I feel like there was something else I did a commercial for. I can't remember exactly what it was. Just a couple. Wow. So, yeah, because I've, I've had a few people on before and they've said that, you know, fans have sent them emails with videos of like commercials that they haven't seen for like 20 years and things. It's becoming such a big thing now. I think people, people find their old VHS tapes and they put them in and find the adverts again. And it's, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's how it happened. Definitely. Because it was, it was a long time ago. So obviously looking back at Sabrina in the 90s, because auditioning now is so different to what it was back then. What was it like to audition for a, a role like Sabrina? And um, did you know the part you were getting, your character? How did that all go? Um, you know, I've told this story before, but it, what you just said is so very true. Auditioning for um, film and television back then, as opposed to auditioning for it now, it's it's changed so much. I, I think I had, I can't remember the exact number of, of times that I came in and auditioned for Sabrina, but it was like eight. I went, it was like once oh, really? a week they had me back and they just kept looking and looking. And, and I had actually originally gone in for a different role, not for Libby Chesler. I had gone in for Jenny, the best friend. Oh, okay, nice. And our casting director at the time, um, Ellie Canner, was so, she knew me from, from uh, auditioning and getting close on a couple of other projects before Sabrina. And she said, you know, I like, I like this. I like your audition. Um, I definitely want to have you come back and, and, you know, read for our producers. But she said, there's, there's this other role and we haven't really started auditions for it yet but I think you might actually be really well suited for this role. I think at the time they weren't sure exactly what they wanted to do, but my look and Melissa's look were so yeah. polar opposite. So she was thinking it might be a good, you know, mix of the two. So she, and the role was originally named Lisa, not Libby. No idea why it was changed. It was changed at some point during the audition process. But I remember the first um, audition scenes I got it said Lisa and so I came in probably two or three times and read both roles yeah and then at some point they said we still really like her but we're just we just want to do the nemesis so then yeah. I stopped reading for the friend and it changed just to the enemy and then I still went in you know three or four more times and now yeah. First of all, everything right now is virtual. I haven't been in an audition in a room with, with reading with people in over two years. Um, but it's very rare that you even do something like this. Like they do have virtual auditions where yeah. you do it over Zoom and you, you know, they've got everybody kind of watching you. I've only had a couple of those. It's mostly self-tapes. You make a tape. And sometimes. Yeah. They'll give some notes and have you tape again. Sometimes they'll do like a virtual callback, but most of the time you just send this tape, it goes out into the universe. You generally hear nothing. And every once in a while, they're like, hey, you got that part. That's it. And I don't know if it's ever going to go fully back to how it was before. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I work in the wrestling business, so we get a lot of people that they send like a picture through their pro member like, they send you links to their matches now on YouTube. And they're like, watch my match. Like, and you don't, you don't really get to see them properly. You just sort of see what they've done on YouTube. And then you're like, oh yeah, we like that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we all have, um, you know, I have a demo reel as well. Like we've, we, my, my team and I have very, very meticulously put together um, kind of a, you know, four to five minute 
reel of, of what we think are like snippets of my best work in the past few years. And that is something that can be sent out as well. So, you know, a lot of times that's what kind of tips you over the edge in the end. If they're, you know, debating between two different people, they watch yeah. tapes and, and somebody says, you know, that, that scene in, in her demo, that's exactly what we're looking for. We know that she can give it to us. And so those help a lot as well. So it's really important to have a good demo reel. Yeah. So at the, the start of Sabrina, did you get to do a script reading with all the cast or were you just given the script to go through yourself? I don't even think I, I read the whole script. When I was auditioning, all <laughs> I had was the scenes that were part of my audition. I did not read the whole script until I was cast. And the, 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 you know, the first day of work, we did what we would do every Monday morning, which, you know, each week we'd film a new episode and every Monday would start with what we called the table read. And we would sit yeah. around a table, just as you imagine it, there was, you know, name cards on, on for each of us where we were sitting and we would just sit around a table and read through the script. So the first time I read the pilot script intact was the very first day of work after I was cast. Oh, wow. That's, that's really awesome. Yeah. So, uh, what, what I mean, did you I, think had, I, had, I think I had been sent it yeah. a little bit before the first day, but that was the first time we read it together. Yeah. So uh, when you sat down and read it together, was that the final cast? You were all going to be in it together and off you went. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So and what was your first day on set like when you first started filming? Obviously, did, what kind of research did you do into your character? Because pain like the villain can be quite difficult. People think it's an easy role, but yeah. it's really not. <laughs> um, you know, if I'm being totally honest, I don't think that I really did any kind of research. I will say this, and I have said this um, in interviews before. I don't think, if you can think of, you know, the, the meanest girl in high school or the meanest guy in high school, they probably didn't think that they were mean. They probably thought they were lovely. Yeah. They have no concept of the fact that they are a truly horrible person <laughs> and they're right. making someone else's life, you know, miserable. Um, so if you are kind of a truly terrible person, I don't know that you would be able to effectively play the mean girl because you don't yeah. recognize what that is. Whereas, I remembered it was easy for me, like, you know, to this day, I could still tell you the, the name of the, the meanest girl in my high school. Um, and certainly back then it was extremely fresh in my mind. So I think I just kind of thought about, okay, I go to high school and, and, you know, I can think of a couple girls right now that just think that they're so wonderful and they're so <laughs> mean. So I just kind of pretended to be them. The only yeah. thing that I did that I really do think was kind of my own, which doesn't happen all the time with like the mean girl roles is that um, I had a wonderful, wonderful acting teacher at the time um, named Ernie Lively, who sadly passed away recently. He's Blake Lively's father, um, oh. but he, he was the best. And I remember working on the audition material and we were trying different things and at some point it came up, what if, what if you just say it with a smile? And it's, there's something about saying something really nasty, but with a smile that almost makes it nastier, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that kind of became a little bit of a trademark, I think, with Libby was that she just, you know, said things that were so mean, but she was, you know, very happy about it. And it just is kind of worse than if somebody's just like, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. It's like, just, oh, you're a freak. Bye. Just saying everything <laughs> with a smile. So that kind of became something that was very, very, very true to who Libby was. Even like the way you would roll your eyes and be like, ooh, and then sort of walk <laughs> off sort of thing. Well, it Bye. worked well. <laughs> yeah. It's almost because, it because you know, Libby would walk off the screen and I feel like at times you would be like, wait, did she just say that? <laughs> because it seemed lovely, but it was really mean. I mean, Sabrina did get her, her own back on you a few times. I mean, oh, there was, absolutely. Um, 
there was, I mean, there was a, a classic scene where she took control of your lipstick and was splashing it all over your face. I mean, what was it like to do that to yourself? I mean, obviously using lipstick and <laughs> just going crazy. Well, that was the audition. Because was that, that the audition? Was, that was from the pilot pilot episode, the very first episode of, of the whole series. Yeah. That was, I think that there was, there was a couple of scenes, but that's the only one that I remember specifically. And from, from day one in the audition, I just, you know, pretended and I knew, you know, but I did the whole, you know, I didn't, I never used real lipstick in the audition process because, you know, um, that's kind of like a, <laughs> it's very messy. So if you, yeah. if they ask you to do it again, you've got a face full of lipstick. So I just pretended but you know, like my hand was possessed, but I, that was 100% the main audition scene. Nice. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, another scene that I remember very good for yours is when you and Sabrina had a fight at the end of a stage and then you both fell into a massive pond of water uh, as a, the fashion show one. Mm -hmm. What was it like? Was it prom, like yeah, it was a fashion show. The, pro the prom one, yeah. What was it like to um, pretend to wrestle together and then obviously have to fall into water? Did, was it cold or was it all right to fall into? <laughs> you know, I don't really remember, but I, I, I definitely think, I don't think that they would have, have done that to us. Like if you're filming in a real body of water, you can't really control the temperature, but yeah. I'm pretty sure we were on a soundstage. So I'm pretty sure that they absolutely made sure that the water was, you know, tepid. It was, it was nice enough for us to, to not, because it, we were hoping that we could do it once. I yeah. can't remember if, if we were able to do that. I wish I could remember because, you know, once you'd have to have a backup of, of the dresses and the hair has to be fixed in that. So I feel like we only fell into the water once and then yeah. us wrestling in the water, we kind of got a bunch of different angles and di different takes of that. But I think the actual fall into the water was just one and done. Yeah. But it was, I, I, I think the water was nice. It wasn't bad. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and I've heard a few fun. stories. When do you get to do things like that? Yeah, I've had a few stories where people have talked about times where they've had to use water and stuff and it's been absolutely freezing cold and it, it sticks in their mind quite well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that, um, again, like I said, if you're using a natural body of water, you can't really control the temperature, but something like this, that was a pool indoors that they had kind of built for us. I think that they were able to make sure at least it wasn't freezing cold. I'm sure it wasn't warm, but yeah. I don't think it was ice cold freezing water. Because um, a lot of things we get to see on Sabrina is um, the fashion as well, because you got to wear... <laughs> Not 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 to the cheerleading outfit, but you got to wear lots of different like nineties clothes. In fact, what did you think of the clothes you got to wear in the wardrobes? Were was there any that weren't very comfy and, and some that you just loved? Like I think at the time I I really liked everything. And I never real I don't think I realized at the time what a fashion plate Libby kind of was. Yeah. Um, you know, with the with the the knee high socks, and then it became <laughs> kind of a, a trend for a bit to have the different colored knee high socks. And I've been to some you know Comic Con type situations, and and there's a cosplay usually happens at, at all of these. And sometimes I'll see someone dressed as Libby Chesler, and I've seen people with absolute replicas of of specifically the the outfit, the purple and black outfit with the two different color socks. Yeah. Um, looking back on it, I'm. <laughs> I cannot believe some of the things we wore. I, I can't believe that was fashionable. I, I feel like I look ridiculous, but at the time it was, it was pretty great. Yeah. It was all, it was all really cool stuff to wear back then, wasn't it? Yeah. We had, we had so much fun. Everything, you know, everything that you think about it really is true. We had such a good time. We were all really good friends and it was really, really hard work, but it was great. We had a really yeah. good time and we got such great lessons in, in physical comedy, in it, you know, we were very young. So we, we learned, you know, work ethic and how to show up on time and how to do your job and be prepared. And those are lessons that I've definitely taken with me forever since then. Yeah. Cause uh, another great scene is where you're confronting Sabrina in the cafeteria and you get to just spill your drink over her. So what was it like being told on set that we want you to throw a drink over someone off your tray and then? Well, you know, that was actually, it was rigged. So the cup yeah. had had kind of a, 
um, it, it, ha it there was there was someone on the floor that was holding a uh, not a string, but it was it was rigged so that it could tip and then come back. So, nice. um, you know, I didn't have total control over that, but there was you know a rhythm to it. I had to to yeah. you know push it at the same time, and we all had to be kind of in sync. And you know, those were some of the earlier episodes, so we were still yeah. learning how to perform these somewhat intricate special effects. But yeah, it was fun. Falling into cakes was fun. Getting, getting, you know, <laughs> flipping on bananas was fun. It was all fun. <laughs> so what was the, the most fun sort of props and um, obviously props you got to use? Like, was there anything in particular that sticks out in your mind that you really enjoyed and you had fun with just playing with? Um, not necessarily fun props that I had such a great time playing with, but there are things that were props from the show that I kick myself now that I didn't try and steal, like the puzzle. <laughs> that was a real yeah. puzzle um, that they, you know, turned Libby into a puzzle and they had to put it together. And um, I wish that I had, had, had thought back then to try and save that. I have no idea what happened to it. There was also a, a, a tall, a life-size, like, cardboard cutout which I somebody sent to me I think it ended up on eBay oh really um, but uh this was a long time ago so I have no idea where yeah. it, where it lives with now but so things like that are just you know we but we always had um you know, we had a lot of animal, not props, but like I had, you know, in the Crucible episode, I had a, a monkey on my shoulder and I was turned into, yeah. a, turned into a pineapple and, to, you know, all of these cool things. So we had a lot of, a lot of animals that came on to set. We had guest stars that were crazy. Yeah. So what was it like? What was what was it like getting to see Salem, the cat work? Did you get to see much of that going on? Obviously how they moved him, made him work. Absolutely. Um, you know, not as much as, as, you know, Melissa or Caroline or Beth, because the cat tended to stay just at home and I didn't go to the yeah. house all that often, but I definitely did. And we had, we had numerous live cats. We had a couple stuffed cats. We had um, two automatronic cats that always had someone that like, there was a person in the couch. There was a person in the cabinets. There was always someone underneath operating that mechanical cat, which is in a museum now somewhere. Um, but we had a couple of live cats that had different specialties. One, you know, was very much was good at, at moving its mouth to seem as if it could be talking. And one was great at, you know, jumping from the, the counter to the couch and, you know, doing those yeah. types of commands and they just switched them out. Wonderful. Yeah. That, Cause obviously everyone remembers the cat and obviously Salem oh, talking. Of seen a, Salem seen is by far the most popular character. Yeah, seeing a cat talking on TV, it's always a, so cool to watch. Like, yeah, and Nick Bakai, who was the voice of Salem, he was actually one of our writers. Yeah, I, I, I saw something on about that online. Like, so what was it like having a writer on set as well as doing the voices? Was that difficult to see? Um, no, it was great. I mean, it was all we knew. I think that it that um, I don't know that it was that was it was always planned to be that, but I think he you know, in the writing room or, or at some point had just kind of done this voice and they were like, that's it, that's the voice, you have to do it. And so he couldn't always be there for rehearsals because yeah. he was in the writer's room, but when he could, he was out and, you know, rehearsing with us and, yeah. and doing the voice. And certainly when we were filming, he was always there. Nice. I mean, obviously, looking at another, looking at your character as well again, um, you had a really good um, singing part as well because you did one of your own songs. Uh, a little bit of you or something yeah cool. I mean that that I don't know where that song came from that song was a very random free song that they got from some stock collection because they had paid so much money for um Melissa for Sabrina's song that they didn't yeah. have any more money to spend so that song I don't know where that song came from and it was so silly but to this day people are like oh little little bit of me and you it's like that is such a it re truly was a silly silly song <laughs> was it actually you singing yeah oh awesome yeah because yeah, i saw it on youtube and i thought i, I forgot to ask if that was actually you singing or not because yeah, i didn't know if they oh, dubbed yeah. it or not yeah 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 you know at that point i'd i'd been doing musical theater and stuff for so long they knew i sang so yeah. 
Um, so yeah, they, I definitely got to do my own, like I said, it was a, a, a pretty ridiculous song, but I did get to do my own vocals for it. Nice. <laughs> Uh, there's some really cool parts in Sabrina because um, there's uh, several times where you two actually switch bodies. So what was it like getting to play each other on set after working with each other so long? I think Melissa and I both would agree that um, it was it was so fun because when you're doing the same thing every week, even though the script changes every week and you have new things to do, you're playing the same part. So I think that any time, because um, it happened numerous times with different characters that they kind of, yeah. you know, morphed into someone else's personality and it was just it's just always fun because it gave you a tiny bit of a break from what you were used to doing every week and just a bit of a change and then you went right back to yourself um i think the, the my favorite episode is uh geek like me and that was a great one because libby kept her personality the whole time but she just went from being you know popular to nerdy to making nerdy popular and then back to herself um so that was really fun so, but I, uh, well, uh, the ones where Melissa and I switched personalities, we definitely had had a blast. Nice. Yeah, I was going to say, out of all the scenes that you got to do, is there any particular scenes that really stand out to you that you think you just absolutely love and you've always watched, watched them back sort of thing and have fond memories of? <laughs> I don't watch any of them back. I, I, I don't know the last time I've actually seen an episode of the show. Um, maybe that'll happen at some point. I don't know. It seems weird to just, you know, sit on the couch and watch myself from a million years ago. But, um, I definitely think the mo for me in my memory, the most iconic scenes would be that, that first episode with the lipstick in the bathroom. Um, yeah. I, I really loved the scene. There was a really sweet scene in actually the geek like me episode that Melissa that Sabrina comes in and finds me in the bathroom stall and I remember really having a great time that day filming that scene and then we had a blast going to Disney World so that was that whole episode was so much fun yeah so how did they film the Disney World episode did you have the whole park to yourself or was there still pub the public around so we filmed it at um, the Animal Kingdom and we actually filmed it right before it opened. Animal oh, Kingdom wow. wasn't open to the public yet. So the only people that were getting to go around the park were, um, they call them cast members, but people who work for yeah. Disney. So yeah, we pretty much had the run of the park to ourselves. And because it was a Disney, you know, it was an ABC Disney show, they obviously had had an in so we we got the park to to do all the filming and that was just super cool nice that sounds like awesome right yeah, it was it was a blast so um, out of all the all the cool wardrobes that you got to wear is there anything that stands out that you wish you had kept and that you loved well i did keep some stuff i mean i don't have it still T to this day i don't have I don't have anything from the show because that was just so long ago but there was quite a bit of the um the clothing that I don't know if I was supposed to but you just kind of <laughs> thought, oh can I borrow this for the weekend and you know here's the thing when they just when you go through fittings where they decide what you're going to wear for each episode and then once they've yeah. chosen everything is tailored to fit you so it's not necessarily going to fit someone else very well because it's been tailored to your specific measurements yeah. So they can't really use things for other people on on another show. So it just kind of sits there. And I think we all kind of, we were young and a bit pushy when it came to, can I borrow this? Can I borrow that? So I definitely, for a few years after the fact, had some of the stuff. I don't really remember what. Definitely some of the cute jackets. Yeah. I think there was a handful of dresses that I thought were really cute and I kept those. Um, but I, I definitely got my fair share of, of cute stuff from the show. Nice. Uh, did you manage to get any of the any of the props or anything? I didn't really. I I, you know, they they are very, and, and this goes for almost every show, especially when you're working on on television film. Um, you they hold on to everything because you never know if something happens and they they're going to need something again. So yeah. the prop department is very, 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 like you really have to have an in or somebody really is doing you a solid favor to give you a prop 
because they, they very closely, especially on a show like that, where we're in the same places all the time. So we're, you're going to go back to the house. You're going to go back to the school. You're going to go back to the gymnasium. So they, they hold on to everything. And I never thought, you know, when, when my time there was done, I never, I I never thought to, to ask, well, can I keep X, Y, or Z? So I didn't really keep, I have, I feel like somewhere in like my parents, you know, spare room there's there might be a script or two but as far as actual yeah. props I don't really have anything pictures and a couple scripts oh that's still good at least you got something that's still yeah. good <laughs> so yeah. uh, you mentioned you mentioned you had quite a few celebrity guests on there was there any one that was famous that came onto the show that you sort of fangirl over a little bit all of them I mean the, <laughs> list of, the list of guests that we had on our show you know we had it, from the music world we had had you know in sync and backstreet boys and britney spears and and we had vitamin c like all of these these insanely popular music acts from the 90s but then we also had dick van dyke and raquel welch and yeah. we um we had the violent femmes that episode i loved so much because i really liked that band at the time so that was like that was libby fangirling over violent femmes but that was also <laughs> Like, I can't believe I'm in these scenes with them. Yeah. Um, we, I mean, we had Penn and Teller. We had, um, I mean, I can't, the list goes on and on because there was, there was rarely an episode where we didn't have a special guest star. And that was something really special about our show. Other shows, I can't think of another show that had as many like special cool guest stars as we did. Yeah, of course. I mean, the, the list is endless with Sabrina. You, when you watch back, you'll just be surprised how many people that you recognize. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, there's so many. So what, what was the, the fame like that came with Sabrina? Was that quite a big, was it quite a big leap for you? Was it obviously because Sabrina was so popular? How, how yeah. was it like becoming famous I mean, with it was, her? It was definitely crazy at first. We didn't realize until probably midway through the first season because we were working all the time. So we never really yeah. went out anywhere. And we never watched the show because we would film until 2 a.m. on Friday nights. So yeah. we just didn't really have a clue how popular it was becoming so quickly. But, you know, once the first season had aired, it definitely became a strange scenario if you went, you know, to the mall or to an amusement park or we went to a concert once and it was kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, I I do remember it being a bit jarring because I just wasn't used to anything like that. But Melissa kind of was because of, she had already done Clarissa Explains It All. So yeah. she was used to a bit of fame already and we were really good friends. So I, I will say that we we hung out a lot. So I think she was able to guide me a little bit better as, as far yeah. as like how to react, you know, and it settled down over time, but it was definitely, there was a few years there where it was a bit like, oh, hi, you know, it was strange. Now it's kind of like, you look like someone. I'm not sure, how, but I know you, right? I'm like, oh, I don't know, <laughs> maybe. Have you had any like really crazy fan interactions, like any really memorable ones from back then? I really don't remember. Um, I'm sure there were, but I don't know about like any crazy specific, you know, there definitely was, was interactions with people who were, you know, over, overexcited and, and yeah. a bit, you know, oh, okay. Hi. But I, I don't think, I don't have anything that was crazy or, or too disruptive or, or embarrassing. I think that, yeah. you know, in, on a whole, people are lovely. Because um, I heard um, um, a couple of little fan fictions online, mm -hmm. and there was a, a really cool one I heard about Sabrina and Libby that, um, and I wanted to see what you thought of it. Is that uh, if um, Libby had actually discovered Sabrina's powers, and then uh -huh. Libby sort of became like the little voice in her ear to like obviously to use them for bad and for them to get up to mischief, then uh -huh. she'd have her her quiz master obviously telling her no. What uh -huh. would you think of maybe doing some episodes or like that? Would that have gone down well? Do you think? I mean, I don't know in what world that could have, that that would have happened if, you know, if there was some sort of of reboot of sorts or whatever, and, and maybe they come back and at this point Libby does know and, and something like yeah. that. But at the time, I think the whole premise of the show would have been um, 
the, the only way that could have happened is if it was some sort of a dream world for Sabrina, because the, the yeah. show in itself only worked because of the fact that she lived in these two worlds and that the outside world did not know. If, if, yeah. if her powers had been discovered, I don't think, I don't know where they could have gone from there. But yeah. it would be fun to think about that in, in so much as it was a possible fantasy on Sabrina's part. That would have been a fun episode. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Because um, obviously moving a bit further forward, you got to be in Bones as well. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, I did and, one uh, episode of Bones. Because um, I, I watched some of the clips on that and um, there was a really cool scene with you in the bowling alley arguing yeah. with, uh, what, I believe it was your child. Mm -hmm. and, I, and it's kind of like watching Libby, but growing up now with her kid arguing. So do you think Libby sort of comes through other characters with you in, in different shows? I think that, um, I mean, on a whole since then, I don't know that I've, I, I wouldn't say that I have mostly played um, kind of bossy, you know, bratty people, but it has definitely come out a handful of times. And if in a few different things that I've done, I think that, you know, that, quality definitely exists for sure so uh, tell us a bit about being on bones because that's that was a really big season as well and big series so what was it like filming on bones and how'd you get that audition i mean the, the, honestly it was the same as anything else I've, I've i've done guest stars on on tons of television shows bones was just one of them um yeah. I, I think I just, it was the same as any other audition back in the day. I just, you know, got the, I have re representatives who, who get the auditions for me and they yeah. just called and said, we have an appointment for you. And I learned the material and I went to the room and I gave the audition. I'm sure there was a callback. I, you know, and then they called and said, you've booked the role. I only worked, I think I only worked a day on that show. Oh, really? it, was all just wow. in the, it was all just, my, my stuff was just all at the beginning of the episode in the bowling alley. Yeah. So I, you know, if you're only working in one location, they try as often as they can to do all of it in one day because they're only yeah. going to be in the bowling alley. They only have that bowling alley rented for one day. So I've done a lot of shows where I've worked the whole week and I've done a lot of shows where it may be a handful of scenes, but I only worked one day. So I was yeah. just on that set for one day. Everybody was really nice. I remember having a, a very nice time, but honestly, I don't, I don't have major memories from that one particular job. Yeah, because uh, obviously, like I remember when I watched it back, so just seeing your reaction when they brought like the body parts down in the bowling alley bit, where the the pins meant to be, like your reaction was really cool to that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that that if I remember correctly, that was kind of the one of the spins on that show was that it always opened with the discovery of a bot of bones. So yeah. it was fun to like get to be in the part of that is that was a staple for every episode of that show was always who's going to find the bones. So that was fun. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Cause um, yeah, I really enjoyed watching bones and I, I saw you pop up in and I thought, oh, that's Libby from Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> Cause uh, another really cool show you got to, you got to do the ghost whisperer. Mm -hmm. That one was and, um, great. I mean, the Ghost Whisperer, I mean, it's, it's still shown on TV over here. It's still really big. So what was it like being on set filming the Ghost Whisperer? Because you had a really good episode on there. Yeah, that, uh, it, was, it was great. Um, uh, I, I filmed a handful of days on that. I remember uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt being absolutely lovely. Um, and uh, I remember that we, it was a lot of night shoots on that. So I just yeah. remember being... Um, cold <laughs> <laughs> it was cold we filmed it on the warner brothers lot um again i remember everyone just being very lovely uh yeah. jennifer love hewitt in particular was very lovely um uh i had yeah i had a great time on that i i don't have really many horror stories uh, most of the stuff that i've done i've i've truly had a good time yeah uh, what was it like filming quite like a spooky series? Because obviously Sabrina was quite magical and this was more based around like paranormal sort of thing. So is it a different sort of spin of acting to kind of do? Well, Sabrina was a half hour show, you know, very sitcom-y. Ghost Whisperer was a one hour drama. So it's a different feel, yeah. but I didn't really, my scenes in Ghost Whisperer weren't, super spooky in any way like it was you know she was she was somewhat heartbroken her father had passed away yeah. and you know they talked about 
there being spooky things, but it had more to do with my boyfriend in the episode, not me in particular. So yeah. it wasn't, I didn't really deal with any kind of supernatural or, or, or ghost stuff in my scenes, yeah. but um, it was very lovely and kind of heartfelt. Because um, another great show you got to do as well was ER. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like being on ER? Because um, obviously you got to use fake blood on that. And um, some of your scenes, they're very dramatic on there. Because obviously mm -hmm. you, you obviously see someone that you care about on that injured. How is it obviously switching into a dramatic sort of role? I've actually done far more of that than I have of comedy. I love comedy, but I have done far more of the, the kind of dramatic stuff. Uh, and that, that, that episode was really cool. I remember uh, specifically really enjoying and thinking it was fun to get like, you know, the fake gash on my head. And, and you know, yeah. and there was a scene where he was kind of pretending to stitch it up. And it was, you know, it was just a prosthetic that they made and they kind of put onto my head. But um, yeah. uh, it was cool. And ER was such a big show at the time. So I just remember being very, yeah. very excited to have gotten to be on an episode of it. So what was it like working with the cast and crew on there? Was it a really big setup to be working on compared to other shows? Yeah, no, I, I mean, you're asking about shows that were so long ago, it's really, really difficult for me to remember. No, 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 it's okay. <laughs> um, but honestly, if, if, it's a, if it's a big show, it doesn't matter if it's, a, if it's a half hour show or if it's an hour show, if it's a network, if it's a show that's on like a big network station or a bigger show it's all the same amount of people like it, yeah. the only things that have like a tiny a small small group is when you're working on kind of like a very very low budget independent film the sets will be a yeah. little bit smaller but honestly bones ghost whisperer er sabrina it all had the same amount of people there's yeah. so many people behind the scenes and they're all there it's the sets are are just loaded with people who are all working very specific jobs the actors are a teeny teeny tiny part of it yeah so was there any sets that you got to work on that really took your breath away that were quite mind-blowing to see once they were all built and set up Um, I don't think I've worked on anything that was like crazy over the top and, and um, I honestly, I, 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 I would say it, it wasn't really a set, but I got the chance to uh, work in Hawaii last summer on a, on a horror movie that's has not been released yet. And we were in, you know, oh, kind sure. of the rainforest almost like we were in, you know, we were in places where they filmed Jurassic Park. So oh, nice. just getting to see that beauty, it certainly was not something that was built. It was man-made. And they, of course, you know, there was, we had some sets of our own that were built in this space, but just seeing the beauty of that yeah. um, was really, really, really cool. Nice. That sounds wicked, especially to be yeah. uh, obviously such a classic film like Jurassic Park and to be in that area as well. And Hawaii is lovely as well. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was beautiful. I was very, very lucky to get to do that. Because uh, another thing I read about you online is I want you to ask about is that, um, you got to be with the Pussycat Dolls. You were their host or something for when they were performing. What was it like it to be with the Pussycat Dolls? I wasn't the host. That was a very strange situation. Um, the director of that show, mm -hmm. I had worked with her previously on another project. And yeah. um, <clears throat> they, for the rehearsals, for the dancers, they needed some tracks, some vocal tracks. Yeah to practice to and she had just asked me if I could help her and and record some of these songs just very things for them to practice with and then <laughs> um I believe Robin Anton who created the Pussycat Dolls when it came time to stage the show she had gone to Kristen our director and said who's the girl that's that's singing you, you know what does she look like would, would she fit in the show could we put her in a swing and have her sing live yeah. and so that's what they did so they dressed me up you know like I was one of the Pussycat Dolls and I sat in this big swing that hung from the stage and just sang in the show while they danced mm -hmm. It was really fun. It was, you know, I think we it, it lasted for like six weeks and we had a different guest star, Christina Aguilera and Brittany Murphy and Carmen Electra. Oh, wow. had different people come and be like the the guest for the week. But um, yeah. it, that was super cool, you know, to be to say, oh, I was kind of a pussycat doll. Like, is <laughs> I did. It was a really fun show to do. And yeah, it started had to... at midnight. It was it was a late night gig. Oh, nice. So what time in the morning did it finish then? 
No, the whole show was probably 45 minutes long. It was. Oh, it okay. Was easy. Yeah. It was just, a, it was just a live performance on, on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. Oh, wicked. Yeah. Yeah. So cause obviously, I mean, you do a lot of Broadway work, so you do a lot of theater work and shows. So tell us a bit about that. Um, well, I did Wicked. Um, so I did the national tour of Wicked, uh, the North American tour of, of Wicked, and I did Wicked on Broadway, and then I then I did the show in Los Angeles. Um, and it's 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 just as cool as you would think it is. It's very 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 yeah. hard work, but doing a show like Wicked is is huge and crazy and very, you know, it's a huge spectacle. So there's yeah. so much involved with it. But I absolutely had a blast. I haven't, you know, I've done a lot of kind of off-Broadway shows and workshops and readings and stuff, but I haven't done yeah. another show on Broadway yet. I would love to. Um, I live in New York, so you never know uh, what what might come my way. But as of now, I haven't done anything else on Broadway, but Wicked is hard to top. That was a pretty great show. Yeah. So is, it, is working on a set like Wicked a lot different to working on a TV show set? Or are they quite oh. similar? No, 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 no. It's completely different. Yeah. when you're doing a, a live stage show it's you have a set that's moving you know in real time and and you're doing the same show every single night exactly the same way and you you have to stand in the exact same spot and and you're you know doing this live performance it's it yeah. couldn't be further from doing television film work which is very small and you have a camera here and you're you know sometimes you, you know the the camera's here and the person you're talking to has to, you know you they have to put them behind the camera so you're like talking to a hand and yeah. um, it's it's they're very 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 different art forms i love them both for yeah. totally different reasons but no it's a t completely different experience yeah so it's um, obviously like the wardrobes and makeup and everything is that very quick and fast paced how you have to get changed and obviously compared to being on a tv show i suppose you can take your time with that and prep yourself can't you oh sure i mean if you're if you're doing hair and and costume changes in the middle of a show it's all very fast i mean unless you have like a huge gap in the amount of time you have to be on stage but in on for theater they call it a quick change and basically you have dressers who are just in the wings and they have everything laid out for you. And I think as, if, as for Alphaba, there's there's one change that she has from uh, in in one short day that is it's like Alphaba and Glinda both have like a, it's I think it's like an eight second costume change. It's so fast, and it's it, like I said, yeah. there's so many people. One person's holding the hat, and one person has the dress open, and then they rip something off, and you just step into it, and it's just everything happens very very quickly if you are a main character because there's not a lot of downtime television yeah. film they send you back to your trailer you change they'd love you to be quick about it but then you go to the trailer and they fix your hair so yeah it's completely different nice it sounds awesome yeah so, uh, what, what was the kind of reading performances you said you did i've done a million i've, I've done yeah. i've done I, I couldn't even count the amount of you know that's that's just something that that happens when plays and and musicals are are in very early stages they yeah. um uh you just, you know, they gather people. Sometimes it's just a day, sometimes it's a week, sometimes it's two weeks and you just kind of work on the script and generally you'll perform it for a very, very small group of people just holding scripts and standing at music stands. So it's just a very, you know, workshoppy reading process, but I've done hundreds of them. Have you ever get to, do you get to teach at all any performing or performing arts at all? Um, I do coachings. Yeah. Um, like privately, I don't really do, I don't have, I don't regularly teach, Yeah. but I do sometimes do private coachings. Um, or, you know, I have, there have been a couple of times when I've gone and spoken to a, a theater class or, or a school, um, or a group of some sort, but, um, not regularly. Yeah. So, uh, what kind of advice would you give to someone coming up in the TV or the theater world? What kind of tips would you give them that you know now? Honestly, I, it's just this, you have to have a thick skin for this business. So if yeah. you don't handle rejection well, it's probably not the place for you because you will be told no 200 times before you get a maybe. Yeah. Um, you know, there is so much luck involved with it, but, but being in the right place at the right time, knowing the right person only counts for so much if you're not prepared. So you just, you have to study and work and learn 
be on top of, of you, you can only control yourself. You can't control the things around you. So, um, yeah. you know, just don't be late, know your lines, always be prepared, be prepared for any opportunity to come and then take it. But at the same time, like I said, that really, truly the, the, the concept of just having a thick skin and knowing that every single time you hear no, nope, no, no, it's not you. It's, it's, it's usually, it has nothing to do with you. So it doesn't mean that you're not talented. It doesn't mean that you're not, you know, pretty enough or, or, you know, tall enough or short enough. There's, there's so many reasons why only one person's going to get the part. So you just have to, if, if it's really that important to you, just keep, just keep trying and, you know, be very realistic about understanding that there is just so many moving pieces to yeah. why one person gets a job and another person doesn't. And you have to just let it go and move on to the next one. Awesome. Yeah. That's brilliant advice. Yeah. That's perfect. So yeah. obviously, cause we, we've all just sort of come out of like lockdowns and COVID and everything. What have you been up to the last few years? I mean, have you been able to keep yourself busy? Are you just getting back into shows now? Uh, what have you been up to? Um, well, the first, definitely the first year of it, I didn't do anything. Nobody did anything. We sat in our apartment. Uh. <laughs> um, but I have been fortunate the past year to to have been um, working quite a bit. So I've I've been I have been able to do quite a bit of work, all television and film, no theater oh. as of yet. But um, uh, you know, they've been great with COVID compliance and, and rules and regulations and keeping everybody safe. And so I've gotten to travel a bit and um, I've kind of gone back and forth between New York and Los Angeles, which is where I'm from originally. And so the past year, I've actually stayed stayed pretty busy. I'd, I'd actually enjoy a little bit of downtime. <laughs> <laughs> so have you got anything coming up, like anything, any projects or any films or TV shows coming out that you can tell us about? Well, I just had a film um, released at the end of at the end of last year called *The Survivalist* with um, John Malkovich and Jonathan Rhys Meyers and Ruby Medine. Uh, Nat, I think you can watch on Amazon. Um, yep. I've done. Uh, I filmed um, a horror movie last summer, which is not out yet, so I don't really have any info yet on when that is yeah. going to be out. But it's called *Dead Season 2*. Um, and then I just did. Um, guest spots on NCIS Hawaii and uh, Magnum PI, both of which have already aired. I have um, an episode of Blue Bloods that'll be airing in about two weeks. Nice, so, awesome. Yeah, good stuff. Because uh, another thing I see, um, you do started doing like conventions and comic book places, like because you just did the 90s one, but now you're coming over to the UK soon as well for a Monopoly events. So have you done UK ones before? I did. Um, uh, Comic Con Liverpool, literally the weekend that the world shut down. We, I, I think I flew back to New York from Liverpool um, on March 10th, and then March 12th was the day that they said everyone's in lockdown. Um, yeah. So that was great. And actually, I was scheduled to come to Edinburgh, but that one got canceled because it was last year and it still wasn't safe. So they're talking about that being rescheduled. It has not been that I know of yet for, I don't, I have not been spoken to about that one yet, but Wales yeah. did come up. And so in August, I'll be going to Wales for that one. And that's, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. So uh, are UK fans a bit different to American fans or are we all just the same? Um, I don't, I don't know that there's necessarily a difference, but I've always felt a, quite a bit of love from the UK fans. The UK fans of the show definitely, I think, are, are very strong, loyal fans and have always just come out and, and been very vocal about how much they love the show. And, and um, it's really sweet. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. They're wicked. Yeah. So obviously, because you did a, a 90s one recently, what was it like to be at the 90s show? Because there was, I, I think there was people like TLC there. There was um, Kel from Keenan and Kel. Did you get to see all these people? All of them. I mean, I, I didn't run into everyone because we were all kept very busy, but there was, I mean, the casts of Boy Meets World and, and yeah. um, Full House and our show and TLC and a couple of Backstreet Boys and um, some some Nickelodeon uh, kids and and um, movies, Mrs. Doubtfire and uh, 
party of five and so much stuff. It was, it was a lot of people that, that I, I may have, you know, crossed paths with back in the day and we haven't seen each other yeah. since. So it was definitely a weekend full of people being like, hi, do you remember me? Jenna? And everybody <laughs> being like, yes, yes, of course. And so it was, it was a lot of fun. We had an absolute blast. Wicked. So it's kind of like a big reunion for you guys really, isn't it? Kind of. Yeah, absolutely. Because, um, I mean, one of the ways I found you to obviously do this talk um, was through a website. So mm -hmm. can you tell us about, about the website that you're on and how people can book you and obviously, or maybe book you for events as well? Um, yeah, it's um, Broadway Plus. So um, they have lots of different, for the, for the most part, they have, a, I think, a stronger amount of, of, you know, Broadway actors. But since I do that as well, but there's a lot of us who do television and film as well. And you can go through the site and you can book anything that you're looking for. You can, you can book um, just a meet and greet. You can do a one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can do a group yeah. coaching. Um, sometimes there's classes and you can sign up and you can be, you get to perform yourself in a class. Um, at the moment, I'm really just doing kind of more, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one bookings, whether it be a meet and greet or, or just a one-on-one. -on -one. I've had I, a show that I did years and years ago. Um, a, one girl wanted to just have a half an hour with me to work on material from that show because I oh, had, nice. had created the role. So she wanted to, she was auditioning for it somewhere. So, um, but you can just go to the site and you can book different performers that you would yeah. love to work with for however long you want. Yeah, that's fantastic that people can yeah. get that interaction and get that guidance from you. And yeah, that's mm -hmm. brilliant. Mm -hmm. And um, we can also book you on Cameo now as well. Is yes, that correct? yes, absolutely. So how, Through how the Cameo website, go? not the app. <laughs> okay for the website <laughs> for the website not the app i tend to um um there's a there's a strange huge fee that that apple is starting to take uh on cameo if people book through the app so book through the website yeah. but i love it i have so much fun on cameo i love getting to chat with people and a lot of times it's a lot of birthday messages and stuff like that but i enjoy it it's so much fun uh, have you had any crazy requests on there yet have i had any what any uh, crazy requests on Cameo? Oh, yeah. I mean, there have been a couple of like strange ones and there, there have been one or two <laughs> that I've turned down because I'm like, mm, that, that seems a little bit weird to me. But for the most part, you know, a lot of times people just, you know, want me to talk like Libby, you know, to, nice. or, or roast someone or, or give them some Libby quotes. I usually tend to do half and half. I never stay, you know, I'll, I'll you know, talk a bit like her and then, and then, you know, send my birthday personal personal birthday wishes. So it's yeah. always different. I never know. It depends on what mood I'm in. <laughs> Is there, are you very active on social media? Because I, I follow you on Instagram. So um, what social medias do you have that we can put on here for people to follow you on? So definitely Instagram is where I am most active. I'm on Twitter as yeah. well. Um, which is different. I, I my Instagram handle is just my name, Jenna Lee Green. Uh, Twitter is real Jenna L Green because Jenna Lee Green was taken. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with Twitter. I kind of forget it exists. And then I'm like, oh, I like Twitter. So I'm not as active on that, but I'm very active on Instagram. I love it. It's fun. Yeah. I'm not on TikTok. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but Instagram is definitely the place to find me, for sure. That's awesome. So um, when I come to the end of my talks, I like to ask just a, a few set questions, if you're happy to answer them. Sure. So, so um, looking back at all your career and all the things you've done, is there any particular moments that really stand out to you that you're really proud of and you, you can't believe you got to do that? I think we've already touched on them. I'll, I'll never, I don't think I'll ever get an experience like Sabrina again and the same with Wicked, like in two different mediums, two of the, you know, definitely shows that are so memorable to so many people. Um, so both of those are hard to top. I yeah. love more experiences, but those two right there are just, you know, kind of the the higher echelon of, of things that I'll get to do. And um, was there any particular wardrobes you got to wear out of everything that is really memorable that you've just always remember that you got to wear? Well, I got to wear the the Act Two black dress, Alphaba dress and Wicked, so... I mean, that is one of the most amazing pieces of wardrobe I've ever put on in my life. It's also 40 pounds. It's insane. Oh, wow. 
Um, and I, I don't think that I've ever worn anything quite as, as intricate and as cool as that dress. So probably that. Was there anything you wore that you didn't get on with that you just were uncomfortable in or it was hard to move in or? Oh, I've worn, I've worn tons of things that I didn't personally like, nor did I think that they were flattering on me, but it's generally not my choice. <laughs> I, yeah. uh, there's so many, there's so many things I've worn that I'm, that I thought, mm, Ooh, I don't like this, but it, you don't get to, sometimes you get input, but at the end of the day, it's never my decision what I wear yeah. when I'm working. And then again, was there any particular sets that you worked on that now when you look back at it, you think it's such an iconic set you got to be a part of or got to work on? Is there something that really stands out for you that way? I mean, honestly, truly what I've already said, I, I've, yeah. I've had such a, a great time on, on every set, but the experiences that I had touring the country with Wicked and, and spending you know three years on the set of Sabrina were just... I, I, you know, I could say, oh, I had a, a, such a fun time filming Cold Case or, you know, whatever it may be, but those two experiences are definitely like the highlights so far of my career as far as just like really, really well-known, unbelievably cool projects to be involved with. Uh, my final question for you, it's very similar, but um, when it comes to like working with props, was there any props that you got to use that it was just really good fun to use and you had a blast using it or it was just really interesting, cool to use it because how it worked or anything? Um, the Grimmery, which was the spell book in Wicked, that's pretty cool. It's yeah. a pretty cool, um, um, it's a pretty cool prop. Um, her broom, I mean, she doesn't use it for very long, but she gets the broomstick. Uh, in Wicked also, um, you know, I, I played um, Alphaba, but I also, I played Nessa Rose in Wicked. I, I yeah. understudied Alphaba, played Nessa Rose. So learning to maneuver and work that, that wheelchair, that was, that was, that prop had to become a part of your body. It yeah. also kind of broke my body sometimes, but the being <laughs> in both of those wheelchairs um, was definitely a, a prop slash set piece that was, you had to really, really learn how to, um, how to use it and how to control it yeah that's fantastic yeah. well I know I know it was only a very short talk today because we just got you on very quickly but I just want to say thank you so much for being on it's been a pleasure talking to you you too and uh, yeah no, I hope you have a really good weekend and I hope to get you on again in the future maybe we can talk some more and hear about obviously your upcoming films that are coming out and some more shows absolutely absolutely cool excellent thank you so much I really appreciate it you're really welcome Cool, excellent. Okay, bye-bye.